I'm, re I'm ready for you. I'm ready. I just shut my other phone off. Go ahead. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Dennis Arfa, CEO of Artist Group International, uh, the legendary agent. And uh, we, we're here to get his insight on the strange times we're going through in the, in the industry and at, at the nation and the world uh, due to COVID-19. And, and just to have a chat, uh, Dennis, I would have to say I've learned as much from Dennis, or probably more from Dennis than anybody in this business. I've always said that go to one Yankee game with Dennis Arfa and you can learn more than any music program uh, in the business. So thanks for coming, Dennis. And uh, Artist Group International is one of the, it's probably the largest independent music agency with artists that include uh, Billy, uh, Dennis's longtime client, Billy Joel, along with uh, Metallica, Rod Stewart, Def Leppard, but I just want to let Dennis tell tell us a little bit about it. For those uh, that don't know you, Dennis, and which I don't know, there's, that's a very small group, but uh, give us some background on AGI in terms of uh, the size and scope of the agency and a few flagship clients, a uh, number of agents, that, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, the uh, AGI is... Um is basically 22 people deep um, with, with 10 agents. We're relatively uh, a pretty lean machine. Uh, we probably have more headliners per um, amount of people than most agencies. And, um, you know, we, uh, you know, um, obviously we're into, um, we're into uh, our artists that play stadiums, arenas, amphitheaters, clubs, uh, theaters, and, and represent many of our artists around the world. Good. And uh, let's, let's start with what kind of year. I mean, you guys have been on a roll for a long time. You're consistently one of the top three or four agencies in the world, uh, and, and certainly in the United States. And you, and you had a great year last year. You've, First of all, with, with Billy, you've represented for how long? 76, I think? 76. It'll be 44 years this August. So what kind of year did you have in 2019? We had a great year in 2019. Um, you know, uh, Metallica finished an arena tour that was uh, in secondary markets. And um, Billy played... Um, uh, nine stadiums, including Wembley Stadium, and opening the stadium in, uh, for the first play ever at Camden Yards in Baltimore. And we closed the stadium, Sunlight Stadium in Dallas. So Billy had a great year. We continued to do some amazing things. And the fact that we played Philadelphia six years in a row and Boston six years in a row and, um, and, Abby, and continued the Madison Square Garden suite which up to this point, we're up to 71 consecutive months and we're in our seventh year. But anyway, last year was a very big year for the company, uh, Cage the Elephant and, um, and, and, and Neil Young and uh, Hall and & Oates. We had uh, and Rod Stewart uh, uh, touring uh, Europe. So we had uh, ourselves a very big year. Kids Bop had a very big amphitheater tour. So last year was one of our biggest years. That's, uh, that's good to hear, but, and all of a sudden we get to 2000, 2020, and, and how was it shaping up? I mean, you had some, some mega tours going, Billy was working again. Well, th this was going to be our biggest year ever, I mean, by far. I mean, we had the biggest tour uh, in, 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 in the country, which was Motley Crue and Def Leppard, which had, uh, with, with Poison and Joan Jett, which had already sold out 25 of the 31 stadiums. And um, so, you know, we, we had sold over, uh, we sold over, I believe it's a, a million, a million four tickets, and we've grossed $140 million. You know, uh, it's just an amazing, um, you know, an amazing accomplishment that unfortunately, most probably, uh, we won't accomplish this year. But uh, Billy had sold out all the stadium shows. His first time plays in Cincinnati. And, we, you know, he was the second artist to ever be appearing at Notre Dame. That'll be canceled. Uh, Charlotte, the stadium, has already been postponed. 
So we had two stadium tours going this this year, including uh, uh, and plus we had uh, you know a lot of amphitheater tours from Rod Stewart, All and Oates, Kids Bop, um, you know uh, Volbeat. We had Smashing Pumpkins playing with Guns and Roses and. Uh, um, Elvis Costello out there and the Strokes were having a huge year and uh, you know Ghost and uh, so we you know this is by far going to be our biggest year that that is not that appears not that it's not going to happen. So when was the uh, the Motley Crew Def Leppard supposed to start? We're supposed to start and we haven't canceled anything we're supposed to start June 18th in Jacksonville. So let's talk about how it, it all kind of unwound. When, take me back to like late, I'd say March, when it's, this thing looked very serious and it looks like we're gonna not do some shows. How, how did you start unwinding and, and where did you first start hearing that this could be bigger? Than I, I would say once the, the, once the middle of March approached, somewhere around the, when the NBA went down, when the NBA on uh, the, the prior to the weekend of March 14th, the NBA went down, and when they went down, basically said, you know, there's no um, sport with fans in in arenas. That was the first real message that um, if they if they can't have fans in the seats, how can we? So that was the beginning of the unraveling, uh, certainly, and for the for the next 90 days of arena shows. So what and, do you uh, I mean, uh, what, what, what were some of the calls that you made and uh, who calls who and, and how do you pull the plug? Well, um, hey, first, you know, you, you, you speak to your artists. I mean, the, the writing's on the wall. You certainly can't uh, subject the audience, the artist and everybody that's involved to a situation where they can get sick. So it was really obvious. I mean, the, 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 the venues, the garden in this particular case, I mean, everybody was on the same page. It hurts you in the heart when you're canceling um, sold out shows and you have 19,000 people are gonna be there and you gotta, you gotta cancel them. And we rescheduled them to September, October, and November, which fingers crossed that actually happens, but, um, I think for most of us who started to schedule shows that were canceling in May and April and moving them into the fall as we did with Five Finger Death Punch, we were supposed to start last week and we moved them to the end of September. I hope that happens, but I, you know, the, the virus rules. Yeah, uh, no kidding. So how did the artist Receive the call when you when you make a call to them. What, I, I mean, I mean, you know, m most artists are aware, obviously, of the environment. I mean, so um, hey, their livelihoods are cut out. You know, it's uh, their people around them, the crew, the staff, their, you know, everybody. And depending on who you are and what phase of your career, if you're an older artist, you're basically losing a year of of, of a short window of life um to continue your career and if you're a younger artist you're losing a year of growing your career and if you are but anyway nobody people are aware i mean it's 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 if you re, it's really out of the artist and out of our control it becomes the government that's really dictating the terms so it's not really my call or a venue's call or even an artist's call you know it's really the the government and and the, the health department that's telling us what we can and can't do. You know, my office is in the same building as uh, an entertainment coach company, right? So over the course of one weekend, Friday, Thursday, and then a Friday into the Saturday, 60 buses come rolling in, you know, and all the staff's in here parking these things. So you're basically in a microcosm, you're watching the implosion of the whole live thing because uh, each tour has not only the eight people, artists or crew that ride on them, uh, but every night in every city, there's a couple of hundred people working around that. So when you extrapolate that out over these 60 buses here, 
And then across however many, 200 or so that would have been out, that's a pretty amazing impact that all went down in like a weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's all surreal. It's just surreal. It's just, it's obviously, it's nothing I haven't seen in my lifetime, but it's just surreal. We have no control. We don't really know what the future holds. All we know is at the moment, we're wiped out. How, how hard is it to, do you, were there any cases where you, you push back and then find the dates and then push back and find them a month later? That's got to be pretty hard because everybody else is trying to do the same thing. Yeah, but you know, right now, I mean, even today, which is different than it was a month ago, I mean, I'm looking at things to schedule things now in 2020, uh, 21. I'm kind of, I'm thinking if you move it to the fall, you may have to move it again. So I am now really into 2021 and probably the summer because it's not only when you can play the dates, it's when you need to get on sale and have a receptive public buying tickets. I mean, unless you're sold out like Def Leppard and Motley Crue, you just need people to show up. But if you're most artists, you need time to sell tickets. And so you need a whole other window. So you need the public to be assured to buy tickets. So we're in for, you know, at the moment, the way it appears, we're in for a little bit of a, of a ride here. Well, not only do you have more dates crammed into a potentially a smaller window if you conceive of the fall being the start back. You also have a diminished economy where people are, in the best case, they would have to make choices, right? Now with conceivably less disposable income, those choices become even harder. So true. interesting dynamic there going on. Well, not only are people gonna be economically hurt, and they can, you know, and, but I also think, uh, you know, what is the trauma of this experience to the 25 year old? What do they learn from this? I better save for a rainy day because this can happen again and I need money to eat and to pay my rent. So what life choices are you gonna travel? Are you gonna to go to a concert? Are you gonna save money for the next tragedy that may happen in your lifetime? So I don't know what the psyche is or what the buying habits will, how they will change, but we'll, we will all be affected. Plus, we don't know, the, the longer this goes on, the, 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 the effect will continue to change. You know, it, for my, even for my demo, my age group, which is uh, the, pro, the ones who buy the expensive tickets can say most of the time, but we've never had anything. Our parents had the Great Depression. And then, uh, I mean, I was post Vietnam. We've never had anything you can compare it to. So, but the impact of these great milestone events lasts for, for a long time and it stays pretty much in the, the, the consciousness of the people who are alive when it happens. Yeah, no, it's, uh, we don't even know the effects of it. This is, this is, this is just the early part. This is, this is like, you know, this is so, we're still so early. And we're sitting here and talking about, we'll do shows in, in 2021. I mean, we still got, what, eight and a half months of, of 2020 to live and for nothing to happen? Wow, it's a lot of downtime. How do you stay in touch with your agents and what are you hearing about the agents staying in contact with the art, their artists, their respect? Well, you know, we have a, an agent's call every Tuesday and, and many of us speak, you know, in the, have conversations throughout the week. And I am in constant in contact with my artists as well as the managers and constantly updating. Sometimes people need to just, you know, hear you and hear, you know, your pulse and hear what everybody else is saying. And sometimes they just, people need to lean on each other, you know, what for support. About, of course. And uh, what about other agencies and, and outside of your company and, and the, the venues and everybody else? You stay in touch with those guys? Well, I mean, you know, I can't, I can't speak for what's going on with, a, I'm sure most agents stay in touch with their clients. Um, you know, uh, different agencies are dealing with different dynamics than we are. You know, there's a lot of uh, people are being furloughed, people are being let go, people are, are getting pay, people, 
So there's a much different dynamic going on in a lot of a lot of agencies than what's going on with us. But are you talking to people in other companies and and staying in touch with the rest of the, the industry? Well, we 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 I've spoken to several uh, several people with the different agencies, and I think they're all concerned with their own dynamic that they have to deal with. Um, some have to deal with their artists and their managers, and some have to deal with their companies. You yeah. know, I mean, you know, if your company's got problems, you got a problem. And so people have additional problems to their uh, keeping their artists and their managers happy. They got to figure out their own lives and where they're, where they're at. And, and so there's a, a lot of different dynamics going on. So how do you think, when you're talking about when it might come back and you tentatively hope it might be in a certain time frame, how do you think the deals might be different and how are people taking, at least at this point in the game, when everything's conjecture, how are people taking into account what has happened and how deals might look different? Well, first of all, and there's been a, a task force amongst the agents and, and, um, and the major promoters, uh, Jay and Michael, about trying to figure out um, how to proceed in the future. And my voice and my vote was, how can you? Until you know what you got and what you got to work with, how can you possibly make plans and, and lock in deals? I mean, you know, you have Live Nation to do uh, an amphitheater tour. They need to lock in their sponsorships again. They gotta make sure everybody's back on. Who knows who's in? So that all affects what they can pay and what they can pay. So we need everybody, we need the promoters, the, the venues to, to hopefully get healthy again so that, you know, we can share some of the good times with them. But it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be more challenging. It's gonna be, I think the, the, the lust of the big dollar is gonna be harder to get. I think there's gonna be less VIP seats. I think there'll be, um, I think I think this. I think it's uh, the, the the refunds that are going to go on, what the, what the brokers have done, what the, uh, how many tickets they're going to hold on to. I think it's uh, um, it, it's certainly going to be different and and probably less for everybody. There's just not going to be what it was, not for a while. So, does everybody feel that the same way? And. Uh, do, do, are the others agree with you and are they looking at, at, at their deals? And, and I can't say. I mean, I can speak about our agents and our acts. I mean, obviously, there's a priority. If you're a superstar act and you sold out all your dates, hey, with Def Leppard and Motley Crue, all they're worried about from, from a promoter point of view is how many refunds we got because the tickets are sold. So there's no, there's, there's, there's not, you know, Billy Joel, there's not much of an adjustment for Billy Joel. He sold out the dates. All you're dealing with is refunds. You know, everybody else, if you're not on that level, then you've got to deal with, um, you know, then, then, then you've got to deal with how many seats can you really sell? Because people have money, um, you know, then all the other elements start to, you know, to, 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 to come into play. So superstars get away, can, 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 can probably ride the storm the best. I don't know if they can make as much money as they were able to, but the secondary and the tertiary and the club acts and the theater acts, they're probably a little bit more difficult. But it seems one scenario might be, and what they're talking about is that, you know, they, they may open parts of the country. I've heard 29 states that are closer to being back than, uh, than others. So, scenario where you avoid the, the coasts and you go into, uh, to, I mean, the secondaries and tertiaries may become the primaries in that kind of scenario. So, I feel like maybe parts of the country, the, the middle of the country might be more available to, to live entertainment than others. And are you considering that kind of thing? So, what do you think then? That we're going to ride a health tour? You know, I mean, you know, it's so, it's a, well, we can go to Omaha this year, but we can't go to Des Moines. Oh, well, we're going to go to Sioux, Sioux Falls. But guess what? They just discovered they had four, four unsolved new cases now. So I, I don't know. I, I think there needs to be a general feeling of 
of comfort and that we, 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 we found a vaccine and we're a, a lot further down the line before um, this will be an organized effort. And besides, sports, the sports teams, baseball, basketball, all of these things, football, they're all going to tell us what we can do about mass gatherings. They, because if they don't have any, how can we? You tell me sports is our guru. They are. They're going to they're gonna be our – the virus rules and sports is going to be the first one because, hey, if Madison Square Garden isn't going to have the Knicks and the Rangers play with any fans, what concert? Is Billy Joel or Fish or anybody going to play Madison Square Garden with fans? And they can't. Not going to happen. And, that, and that's the same thing in a theater or anywhere. If you can't have any kind of mass gatherings, how could you have I – was, I was talking to a theater owner today. What are you going to have, people sitting six feet apart and see the 2,000 seater becomes 500 seats? How you, you know, it, it's, the math won't work. Many things won't work. You know, it's, it could be the unplugged era when we come back. I, it, it would seem to favor the nimble and smaller tours and uh, smaller crews and the ones that could turn around on a dime and, and go to a, here and there as opposed to the mega 20 bus, 20 truck tour. Well, the problem is now, if you want to kind of build the, a super production, you got to pay for it. And there may be less money out there to pay for it. So there may be less profit. You're an artist. You've got to build a big, big production. Well, if you can't have the income and make the kind of money that we've gotten spoiled to in these times, it's, it's, it's not going to, um, it, it's, it's, it's going to only get worse. So the more, so your profit's going to go down. Now what you're going to do is you're going to build a production you're going to end up paying for it as the artist. More so, because you, and, and it, you're going to have less profit. That's really the game. And who knows what the brands, their, their capacity has been diminished as well. So the thought of a sponsor just coming in and covering those production costs, it's not a game. New ball game. So if you were given a green light and uh, said, okay, we can go, you can go by this day, how quickly can you put together a, a 40 day tour if all things were ready to go pretty quickly <laughs> pretty quickly pretty quickly I, they'll probably put it together within a with and listen i mean right now we uh we uh, you know i'm holding dates for stadiums to offer potentially postponed tours for next year they're not postponed yet but if they are we're basically in a position to have a rowdy so when you when you call for 2021 and you talk to the venues and whatever they may be, are you finding other people that are working looking for dates in that area? And are you? Yeah, working? absolutely, absolutely. But um, you know, basically, you know, I would say that uh, superstars are welcome first. Yeah. Well, isn't that always the case? That won't change. Well, but but in in this in this environment superstars have less, you know, have less, um, um, less obstacles in the way. You did say, uh, you alluded to it earlier, but that, that live is, uh, live music is last in line as far as starting back. And it's not just true for, uh, the, the mass gatherings will be the last thing to come back. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on the back of the bus. <laughs> we're, we're, we're the last ones. Right now, we're in the worst business to get back to business. We may be, we, 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 we've been a great business. Uh, it's an amazing run, but right now we're in the worst position. I mean, they got to open the restaurants first, right? I mean, it's got a yeah. lot. Oh. Yeah, but that's, you know, they, you know, that's a beginning. And maybe that helps us get to the clubs, but I, you know, I mean, I heard one artist wants to still play a stadium and everybody wears masks. Well, good luck. I mean, I hope the government lets you do it. But, um, you know, I, 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 I'm not the government. I, I, I don't make the rules. And um, I, I don't know how people are going to, and I think obviously young people who have, you know, feel immortality, uh, it may be easier for them to um, uh, feel the, the freedom to go out. But I think a lot of people are going to be very nervous about not only going to live shows, traveling, going on planes, all of that, hotels. There's going to be a lot of nervousness out there for a while. And, and meet and greets, that sort of thing. I, I, 
uh, yeah, meet, 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 meet and greets digitally. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the touching. I mean, what did Fauci say? I don't think we'll ever shake hands again. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, the meet and greets and that, that ancillary income is, now, there may be some bands and there'll be some fans that won't give a shit, you know, and that may come down. It, you know, people will have to do what they have to do. So I, I can't speak for, for what people will do personally. You said uh, you said in an earlier conversation we had that it will have a lasting legacy and the agencies might operate differently when we come back. In, in what way or could you elaborate on that? Well, you know, um, first of all, depending on how long this goes on, I don't, you don't know which agents will be at which agencies. You don't know how that game's going to all change. You don't know who's going to get furloughs, who's going to get let go. This is just the beginning. People are sitting there. Wait till we're sitting here, if we're sitting here, four or five months from now, when it's a half a year and you're still not sure when you're going on sale. I mean, you know, some of these agencies who are already hemorrhaging money, what are you going to do? We're all hemorrhaging money, but some are hemorrhaging much more money. What are you going to do? I mean, are you going to be able to hold on to the agent who has a client that's on the, the you know, that has clients that are happening? Can you afford to wait two years or three years before that client tours and get the income back? You're going to have to make some, some very tough decisions about who's in and who's out. And I don't know who's going to be where when this whole thing settles. And um, I think also what changes is I think a lot of um, agents who, jo who join companies, I think, you know, uh, who join companies for security, well, there is no security. You're as secure as you are. And um, I think people are finding out that, wow, I thought I had this secure job. Well, either you're getting laid off or your salaries are getting half, you know, cut in half or whatever. And why join a company? So in bad times, that's what happens. When you, you're, you're hoping when you join a company, if there's bad times, you can survive that. And so I don't know what the, the trust factor is that in, in the relationships between some of the people who head the agencies with their, with their agents. So I, I think that uh, you'll see, you can see a very different landscape. There'll be a lot of different trust that'll go on. Did you get your march? Uh Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden in. Did you get that one in? No. So the last one was February. February. And then, I mean, how many straight? What a shame to break that string. Well, we didn't break it. I mean, it, it, unfortunately, it took uh, higher forces to get in our way to stop the streak. But um, I think, Billy, when the time comes, we will look forward to continuing the streak. There may be an asterisk, you know, like when Ted Williams. Um, didn't, he didn't continue his career for the Boston Red Sox. And they said, well, he didn't play for two years because he was in the army. Well, we got a different army. So we'll have to put a little bit of an asterisk, but I think the world will know that the streak went on. It wasn't us or the fan base that stopped. It was a higher force. Well, I, I agree. I believe it'll come back. And I, thankfully, and the shame of this, is because we've truly been in a golden era, you know, having been around a while and seen live ebb and flow and come up. It's been a 10 year increase. And not only that, the international thing has gotten so strong where you could really work out the venues internationally, where you could go to a lot of different countries and play and know you're going to have a good setup, all of that. And, and if America's complicated, International is way more complex because you don't know what the situation is in any country. Well, I'm in touch with a lot of people in a lot of territories. Um, yeah, pretty much the world is fucked. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's really where it's at. I mean, Australia is not much different than America. America is not different than England and uh, South America. Or, it's just fucked up. I you know, that's, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it, it, we're all on the same page in this one. I mean, you know, I, uh, Billy Joel played Mexico City March 6th. I mean, one month later, you know, you'd go there, you go, Jesus, it doesn't feel like anything's going on. And a month later, Mexico City's canceling all their shows. So it's just, it's just, um, it's not a good situation. It's a worldwide disease. I mean, you talk about, can you go to Japan? No. Can you, you know, can you go, you can't go anywhere. There's nowhere that's safe at this moment.
you know, but uh, we were on such a roll as an industry and continuously climbing and we still hadn't found the peak of it yet, I don't think, when this happens. But given, with all the uncertainty that's out there and the things we don't know, with if everything returns and you think people live is still going to be the great business that it was? Are you confident that once everybody feels safe that, that the shows, the business will return? I believe so. I'm a, I, I believe so. I believe, uh, you know, as you said before, Ray, you know, some of these experiences that people have are lifelong experiences and, you know, I, I, we, we need this. We need to connect and, uh, and, and, and connect to um, the artist and the music and the ambiance. And those are some of the great times in people's lives. That's one of the things you can do. It doesn't mean you had to go to Italy for a vacation or, or Mexico or, or the Caribbean or whatever, wherever you get. Live is still cheap. Even if you're spending $1,000, and I don't make light of that, for two tickets or something, it's still cheap in comparison to things you might do for other sorts of entertainment, you know, in terms of travel or it's still one of the great experiences. And not and there and and the uh, there's so many um, live different live attractions. So not everybody goes to the same live attraction. There's all genres, there's all um, there's, there's all genres of music, genres for different people. So and there's so much population that the, the person who might go see um, Michelle Obama in concert and the one who might see Bruce Springsteen, then there's a different one who'll go see Halsey. And then there's somebody different who'll go see a WWE event. And there's somebody different who will go see, um, you know, a Latin show or, or, you know, so there's just so much diversification, you know, that the live business, um, it's like our generation, maybe they go, to six, five, four, five, six concerts, but we're not going to 20. And that's so, but so there's enough for everybody and for those special nights. You know, I know I say, I speak to people that go, oh, Jesus, I was so excited to see Billy play Madison Square Garden in March. I was taking my daughter. You know, that was, you know it's, it's, it's still something that I believe will, will come back. Absolutely. It's one of life's pleasures. I should have said uh, earlier, but if people didn't know, you're based in New York. Uh, do you go into the city? Still? No, I'm actually right now in Florida. Oh. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, no, I have I, my office has been closed since uh, March um, 16th. We've been closed, and um, I haven't uh, I haven't been in Manhattan. And when I talk about coming back, everybody goes, "Why?" You know, I mean, Florida is no bargain either. Everything's closed down here, too. I mean, you can't go on the beach. You can't go anywhere. Here's a guy, Dennis Arfa, who has been grinding hard, hard charging for 44 years and, and, and just, getting it every, just getting, it, getting it hard. What's it like to not be doing that all of a sudden? Well, I mean, I haven't... Um, you know, I'm still in touch with people. I haven't yet hit uh, the lull of boredom, boredom yet. I'm still kind of rescheduling days, still looking at things, still in a lot of conversations, still watching the landscape of the business that I'm that I'm in, uh, looking still for opportunities with the with the with the world that I live in. But um, it hasn't really hit me. What I try to do is do things or try to. Um, you know, maybe do something that helps me forget about life for a while. So I keep my mental health. And I also try to, um, and I haven't had that kind of low. I'm probably watching more television than I ever have, especially at night. Uh, I'm reading more, but um, I'm, I'm talking a lot on the phone. I'm still talking to a lot of people. There's a community of us. Yeah, that's for sure. I, and I bet it's true for you, but this is, without question, the longest I've been without singing live music in, in 35 years plus. I mean, I'm, I haven't seen a show in a long time and it's never been that long before, since I went to my first. So I miss live music. Hey, I have a blank calendar. 
you know, oh, go see the allergist next week. You know, pick up your allergy medicine. I mean, I have a basic blank calendar. I was going to Charlotte this Saturday. This Saturday night, we were in playing the stadium in Charlotte. No, I'm not going. Last Friday, we were at the Garden. I'm not going. You know, so all these things that you were looking to do, all these events that we, we had going, um, you know, it's, uh, but I go day to day. You know, you, you care that your loved ones are okay, your children, your, your wife, your, and, and, and you stay in touch with loved ones. I speak probably to, to, to some of my friends more than I normally do. When I say friends, people have nothing to do with the business. So what's the most interesting conversation you've had in the last week? The most interesting conversation? Well, I think one that included to do the best you can in this bad situation. I think I think that's the that's the that came up with me and a South American promoter, and uh, he was telling me, you know, and basically that's what you can do: do the best you can in in, in a very difficult situation. It, it, it is, it's about uh, I guess wisdom, as much wisdom as you can have, and use your wisdom tools to pull you through. But it's fucked up. My, my best friend's a psychologist, and the, most of his dealings are in relationships. And he tells me 85% of his patients, they're all talking about the virus. It's all the anxiety, it's all about the virus. So maybe that's what we gotta do. We can take uh, lessons or, or schooling now and become psychologists. But you, you gotta keep your, you know, you gotta do the best you can to keep your shit together. But there's a lot of pressures. People don't have money. That's a whole other pressure in life when you're struggling to make ends meet, you know, fortunately, um, you know, I don't have that problem, but I, but, uh, but a lot of people do. And, um, you know, and it's just to get by. And uh, so, you know, it, it, I'm in a better position and some of us are in a better position than others, but I can't even, you know, people who are starving and struggling and, I, 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 Jesus, I'm just hoping we don't have anarchy in this, in this country and in this world. Because I don't know what, you know, if you told me I got to feed my family, I don't know to what extent I wouldn't go to do that. So anything you'd like to leave us with uh, as we wrap it up? And thank you for sharing your time and thoughts. I just wish uh, people well. I hope we, um, I hope, I hope we, I hope we get a Hail Mary. I hope there's a Hail Mary out there somewhere. And um, there's an answer sooner than later. That's all, I'm, 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 uh, I'm just, that's what I'm kind of hoping for. I say to a lot of people, hope for a Hail Mary. And you know, you hear about, oh, they're testing here, they're testing here. Maybe something comes through, maybe, you know, so I'm, uh, I'm hoping for a Hail Mary. You and I both, brother. Well, thanks for taking the time and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank, Thank you, Ray. Always, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. See you. All right.